So hi and welcome, Nicholas. Uh, first of all, uh, this is your second session with me in philosophical counseling. And we agreed yeah. that this session would be recorded. Yeah. Uh, we agreed that uh, we would make this session public on YouTube. Yeah. And we also agreed that uh, if you uh, or I uh, decide uh, that we want to take it out of YouTube, uh, we will do so. So yeah. last week, uh, it was our first session and um, we talked about a few things of which I'd like to uh, remember the following. First of yeah. all, you, you said that for a while you listened to um, Jordan Peterson's videos and, and tried to follow the path uh, he apparently recommends of being more realistic, pick a job, don't dream, be responsible, I'm quoting you. And that the consequence of that is that you felt that your spirituality shut down. Exactly, yeah. Uh, we, we, we can come back to that idea. You also mentioned that um, you do have some, you do have rather good confidence in your cognitive ability. Yeah. But not in yourself. So you distinguished these two uh, instances and you can also uh, get back to that. Yeah. You said that um, your, your biggest fear, and I'm quoting you, your biggest fear is bombing through life without any rea realization after a while. And, uh, and you ended up, we ended up talking about flow. You said, I wish I could be a go with the flow person but then we we realized that well there might be different meanings of, of that idea of flow and um, some meanings might mean that we are not really a reflexive person but other meanings of flow actually might mean that we are actually very aware uh, of our surroundings yeah is there anything i forgot that you feel was important uh, since you had one week to reflect on our session i feel that that um, summarizes uh, the, the last uh, session accurately i, I didn't uh, i have my my notebook here today but last week i didn't so i, I didn't write down a lot of things but uh, i'm glad you were able to uh, did you actually memorize it or you wrote it down? <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. I, take, I did take uh, some notes. Okay, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be taking this today. But that's accurate. Uh, that summarizes basically my core uh, philosophical dilemma, if you like. Yeah. And can I ask you, uh, since our conversation last week, what were the elements that came back in your uh, interior monologue in, in, you know, the reflection that you probably had about our yeah. conversation? Yeah, one thing that uh, stuck out to me was uh, uh, your reflection on the idea of, of going with the flow. And you said, uh, because I, I, I said that going with the flow, it's kind of a you know, not thinking too much, you know, and uh, you say that it's not um, necessarily accurate to associate going with the flow with a sort of low intelligence or something like that, because uh, not many people are actually going with the flow and it takes a lot of creative thinking to execute the going in the flow mood properly. So that made me uh think a lot you know so because i i was thinking in a, as you pointed out last week there was a lot of uh, binary sort of thinking where i thought for example you either had to go with the flow and let go of all sort of reason you know or you had to be very rigid and logical and so on and uh, 
uh, it made me realize that you can be reasonably going with the flow, which is something I'm thinking of and I'm trying to work on, you know. So uh, I guess there was something else as well that came out to me. Uh, that was the main one. If I remember the other, I will, I will say as well. Right. Yeah, indeed. We mentioned, for example, the, uh, the famous book by uh, Mihaly, uh, Chisenk Mihaly, which is a, a book on flow, which he defined as a state of uh, high focus that uh, is reached by, for example, artists or, or writers or researchers, anyone that is deeply immersed in a topic that they love. Yeah. And, um, and that, of course, uh, does not mean just uh, floating in the wind, uh, but rather being dedicated to, to a vision and therefore being able to um, perhaps indeed um, neglect some aspects of, of reality and favor others. But in the end, most importantly, uh, have a self-reflective uh, attitude towards what we're doing in the sense that anything can be information if you have, if you have a passion. Uh, anything can, can, uh, be, uh, can feed into it, can be an inspiration. Yeah. So, uh that actually connects with the conversation we had about binary thinking because you felt that there was a dilemma right you felt that we talked a lot about idealism and realism yes yes right and yes and then... i i remember you were you were saying sorry for cutting you off but you, you were saying that at some point in the discussion you were going to explore the idea that these are not opposites and i was looking forward to that so, right yeah. yeah we talked a bit about the idea of pragmatic idealism right yeah um i asked you if you thought that the major uh, improvements in in our uh, humanity uh, adventure and experience on earth are um, brought about by realists or idealists remember and yeah. your answer was well probably idealists yeah so there is there seems to be a you know a sort of big lie uh, around that if you're a realist you will make things happen. Well, actually, if you're realist, you're more likely just to reproduce the routines and and um, and not bring anything new to the world. Now, of course, things are more complex. Hence, the idea of pragmatic idealism. Yeah. But more importantly, let's get back to you and to to the present. So. The reason why you want to reflect philosophically upon your life is that you, as you said, want to be sure that you take the right direction. How would you define that direction, by the way? Well, uh, if you, uh, I, I didn't do a lot of economics recently because I'm in computer science, but if you, if we were to go by uh, Maslow's uh, triangle, it's basically self-actualization, self-fulfillment. Uh, so I want to go in a direction that not only provides food, clothing, and shelter, but something I can be, uh, have a sense of fulfillment or, or pride about, you know, uh, that, that's what I would define in general terms as. as right. a... And so, and do you, do you have um, any idea of what would give you such sense of fulfillment or pride? Well, it's it's uh, it's not a concrete idea, but you know, it's also not too general. Like, make the world a better place. 
I do have, you know, very specific sort of things in mind, you know, uh, entrepreneurially and otherwise, you know, and um, like I said, I'm very confident in my cognitive abilities and I want to use that to give back somehow, you know, because uh, uh, I am from uh, Nigeria, you know, so I have, um, you know, the pictures, the, the United Nations, you know, stabbing kids in Africa or whatever. Well, I lived with them. I have seen those things. And I feel like I have enough uh, sort of cognitive ability to uh, contribute in a meaningful way, you know, uh, using my field in, in the sciences and so on. So it could be uh, some kind of entrepreneurial thing or some kind of, I can get pretty uh, good involvement in uh, political movements as well and so on. So I have uh, a modestly concrete idea of what sort of thing would be self-actualizing uh, for me. Uh, I also know what won't be you know, which is uh, important, you know. It's one of the good things actually I learned from, from JVP because he said, if you want to know your purpose or what you want to be or something like that, you have to uh, start by eliminating what you cannot be and what you, what you, what you know you don't want to be, so. Mm. All right, which is two different things, right? Yeah. Because to know what what we don't want to be relates to 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 the self right and to self determination yeah. um, the other point might be more tricky because do we really know what we're capable of right it's uh, it's complicated uh, very often we might be too critical or or perhaps um, somehow self delusional yeah, yeah, uh, that's, I, I, I am on the too critical side of the spectrum because uh, for a very long time in my life, I was actually very uh, overconfident, you know, like I could do anything and so on and so on. But I, I don't know if this is just my personal philosophy or sort of the natural biological openness of childhood, you know, just going away with age. But uh, now I'm in a, I'm 24 now, I'm in my mid twenties. So I'm, I'm at the stage of my life where I can no longer say to myself with great confidence, you can do anything as such, you know? So I'm, I'm trying to be cautiously optimistic now, you know, mm. that's what, that's, that's what is creating the sort of philosophical dilemma and so on. Yeah. All right. And we'll get back to that because um, that I think raises question of honesty yeah. or, or, uh, or self honesty. But before that, I would like to point and ask you if you feel that there is a slight contradiction between, on the one hand, uh, wishing to self-actualize. Yes. And on the other hand, giving back and contributing. Right? Because there is a tension yeah. there, right? On the one hand, it's like about the others. There is an idea of altruism. And yeah. on the other hand, there is an idea of uh, self, of self-development. Yeah. How do you combine these two? Well, for me, they're not necessarily uh, opposites. For me, they're, they're basically one and the same thing. Self-actualization, for me, it's a very external thing, you know. Uh, it's a very... Self-actualization, for me, is directly proportional to the self-actualization of others because what else is is life you know um i have lived in the west for a while but i still retain my sort of uh, community oriented uh, upbringing you know where it, it's not really a very nice thing for you to 
be uh, disproportionately successful to everyone around you and also unwilling to assist, you know. So uh, that's influenced my upbringing to the point where, uh, sure, I want uh, some form of stability, a house, a, a job, and uh, some income and so on. But beyond that point, there is nothing that can actually make me feel more actualized than actualizing others, you know? So that's the way I view it here. Yeah. Mm. So I, I, you, you mentioned that you were uh, raised in Africa and what you're saying about the, um, the um, sort of a synthesis between self-actualizing and actually uh, actualizing others, that sort of resonates with uh, Ubuntu a philosophy. Uh, I don't know if you were aware of it or if you heard of it. I know it's a, it's an operating system in, in computer science. I don't know. Right, right. It was used. It was indeed. But originally, it's a, a um, I think South African uh, let's say notion yeah. Ubuntu that sort of means. I am because you are. It 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 emphasizes the interdependence of most of our capacities, right? The fact that I'm right now talking to you, I didn't yeah. invent that language. Yeah. So um, uh, this is uh, oh, this this made me um, uh, reflect. Sorry, I will just pause the recording because I have someone arriving. Okay. Right, so we're back. we are back after a technical interruption. Yeah, so actually, it's interesting that many people mentioned this uh, Maslow's uh, self-actualization um, concept, and we often forget that he actually had another. So there's this famous pyramid uh, yeah. where, where we first, of course, we. Uh, at the base of the pyramid is fundamental needs like shelter and food. But he actually proposed a higher st step above uh, self-actualization. Uh, yeah. He, yeah, which he, he called, do, do, do you know? No, I've never heard of this, no. Yeah, he called it self-transcendence. I think I've seen it somewhere. I just right. said transcendence, like a, a picture or something. I didn't know. Uh, I thought it was referring to some kind of a oneness or like spiritual kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit that. It's the idea that he, he came to the conclusion that the idea of self-realization was perhaps a little bit too uh, egocentric. Uh, yeah. Perhaps bringing, at least for an Occidental um reader or citizen bringing the idea that well it's all about individual accomplishment and so by self-transcendence yeah. he meant he, he meant precisely well actually what do you think he meant well I, i've always been rather not necessarily skeptical or cynical, but I've always been careful with the idea of um, transcendence and spiritual oneness and so on, because it's a very isolating, you know. You go in a mountain somewhere or to Tibet or something, and you evolve. It feels weirdly self-serving to me, even though it's meant to be like make you one with others and so on. So. Uh, in my opinion, um, that uh, transcendence would work for me if it's not an extended period of withdrawal from society or something, because my idea of self-actualization is clearly, uh, uh, it's clearly a uh, coupled with the actualization of others. So if, if I'm going on some kind of spiritual journey, which will take me out of society, like the ancient monks and so on, and make me unable to contribute in a meaningful, tangible way, 
it wouldn't be fulfilling for me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting because we might be back again. You mentioned yourself that last week we we had some moments of binary. You had some moments of binary thinking and dualistic yeah. oppositions, right? And it seems, uh, like it seems to me that you just made another one, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, to be so, but I mean, it's it's understandable in the sense that human history has made that distinction for most of of, of its um, period right uh, we tend to think that transcendence is somehow religious and that it's not achievable in uh, in our secular societies and that it demands some form of uh, withdrawal and therefore it sort of uh, conflicts with our need to to act in the world, to be uh, uh, you know uh, engaged. Yeah, it's, it's a form of um, it's uh, it categorizes and otherizes you as well. Like you're now a, a one of the transcendent people, and that's right. not really what I want. You know, I want to be. Right a person who is part of everything that's going on, maybe with a slightly different point of view, but who is also meaningfully contributing, you know, I don't want to be a transcendent or something like that. I don't know if that's a thing mm -hmm. as well. You know? <laughs> no, but that's, that's, I see your view. Um, I think yeah. that what Maslow meant is, at least this is what I will mean here, is that transcendence is actually all all around us uh, in very in things that we usually don't see as uh, transmuting us or tran uh, you, know, you know transforming us. Uh, for example, ideas. Right, it doesn't have to be a god. Ideas transcend us. Values, right. Let's take a person mm. who uh, would um, believe that justice is her highest ideal and would try to live accordingly. That is uh, qualifies uh, that exercise, if it's uh, conducted daily, exercise as a form of self-transcendence that actually is engaged and embodied in society, right? Because that person will uh, hopefully uh, perform all series of more or less um, uh, conclusive and impactful acts in the direction of her ideal. So I think yeah. that's what he meant. I think the idea of self-transcendence is the idea that we can serve ideals and ideas uh, such that we sort of forget ourselves at least to a certain extent because it might be it might be dangerous to completely forget uh, ourselves right but yeah. we we sort of become concepts right so it's like we we become more than uh just a um you know um uh, let's say a thinking animal yeah or do you prefer okay so you for you uh transcendence there is there is a, a religious idea and and so let's go back yeah, to stuff I, I, I saw it predominantly as having to do with a religious sort of aspect and i actually uh it may just be a, a definitional problem but i actually thought transcendence was more of a self-serving thing than actualization because transcendence to me meant uh, going in a mountain and you know bringing your heart rate down to like 15 beats per minute and all that kind of stuff right you know right, right. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> right yeah so right. I'm, I, I am interested in the idea you just mm -hmm. brought up about being uh, transcendence being all around us or something like that right 
So the the speaking of all around us, traditionally in philosophy, if we get a little bit technical here, the yeah. word transcendence has an opposite, which is uh, <laughs> imminence imminence and so imminence. yeah so imminence designates everything that is here and now let's say yeah. uh, matter flesh uh, feelings emotions yeah and transcendence would designate more so you would have you with imminence you have that idea of horizontality right and transcendence you have that idea of verticality right Mm. I think we are a species that is both imminent and transcendent, right? I mean, for one reason, we we are walking erect, right? Since Homo erectus, so that sort of relates to yeah. um, a sort of a physical manifestation of some form of transcendence, perhaps. But okay, so I get your point. You want to be yeah. in the world. You want to you want to make a change in the world and not in the Buddhist monastery or, and so the question yeah. is, right, which, what's the orientation there? What's, do you have an idea? Because I suppose that if you want to make a change, you want to make a change, as you said yourself, for the better, right? Yeah. So we had another technical uh, interruption. Probably. Yes, yes. But, um, hmm. I forgot where I was. Uh, you were talking about uh, transcendence around us, maybe. Uh, yeah, imminence and in, in, in transcendence, yeah. right? So, but you, it's okay, you, you want to be in the world and, um, and uh, act upon it. And I suppose that you have an idea of what is a better world, I suppose, or? I, 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 I have a, a general idea. Yeah, I, do, I don't have a concrete idea because I don't believe in, I, I believe that, that, that that's a, in a political sense, having a concrete idea of what constitutes a better world is like a, a, a recipe for uh, budget uh, fascism, you know? So yeah. I, I, don't, <laughs> I have a general, you know, just if people being, uh, hungry people being fed is, is okay. And uh, like just basic stuff, you know, it's not a grand, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, universal um, a, a theory of everything. It's called something like that. You know, I don't have any of that. Right. Okay, but uh, so again, another uh, dualism there. So, yeah. if we have a concrete idea on how to change the world, then we become a fascist. So it's better mm -hmm. to leave to leave it unconcrete but then we we don't we don't do anything in fact if it's unconcrete so there's another dilemma there or well yeah i i didn't see it as a dilemma uh, previously because i have always been worried you know about being uh, the problem with being idealistic really and i got a lot of this from gbp as well uh, is uh, people who are very idealistic like that often find themselves having to go through, uh, having to enact those ideologies into reality. And the process of doing that can result in uh, conflict, you know? So it's, for me, I personally think you should leave wiggle room or like uh, for change really as opposed to having a a concrete uh, a concrete idea of okay what this is what a better world would look like you know mm -hmm. if i if i had a concrete idea of a better world it would probably be a world in which um 
everybody had to have a gym membership or something because like, it's just healthy hey. for you you know <laughs> and that's that is fascism you know fascism is i want what's good for you even mm. though you don't want it you know that's what it is you know wait 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 but that's interesting there because so first of all when you say uh g g b p you mean jordan peterson right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, because not everyone is uh that yeah, familiar yeah, with yeah. um I, I, he's very popular though yeah. right right and so uh this is a little bit this needs unfolding there because okay if i show you this glass yeah this is a concrete idea. This is an idea made concrete. Yeah. Uh, ideas themselves are, are have usually more or less social force such that they create change. Yeah. Uh, but there seems to be there a, a sort of a shortcut yeah between the idea that we do all have some normative uh ideas of what it is to be in better states and worse states yourself you talk about self-actualization uh, yeah. and so you have a so, some feeling of what it is to be in a better state than a worse state at least for yourself yeah, there, there is a general idea of what's good and bad yeah. right right and and so if we come back to uh kant the philosopher emmanuel kant he actually said the following he said we we have all we can all be made to um be explicit of our idea of the good yeah but in order for that idea to be really ethical it would need to be universalizable it would need to be made good for all yeah. or, or at least it would need to be accepted as good for all and then of course is Politically, that, uh, we know that there are yeah, uh, some sorry, abuses sorry. there, right? Sorry, I just wanted to ask, is that is that in a utilitarian sense? Like that's the uh imperative uh you know uh, categorical ethics of, of Kant. Yeah. Uh, categoric imperative is this idea that you need to wish for your personal code of conduct to be applicable by someone else uh someone else being anyone possible else right so for mm -hmm. example if you if you tell yourself i i act always in a kindly manner or i yeah. speak always in a kindly manner then you think is this can this be made universalable universal universal uh, mm -hmm. what so if everyone in the world acts or speaks in a kind manner would that qualify for a better world so those kind of questions uh of course if you start to impose it on others uh yeah you enter into problems but what would it be for example to impose how could you impose kindness that wouldn't be kind yeah. So in that case, uh, it sort of self-destroys, right? So kindness seems to qualify for something that could be applicable universally. Yeah. Uh, and um, of course, we what we know is that I think there are two things that are dangerous. It's dangerous to think in terms of absolutes. But it's yeah. also dangerous to think that it's possible not to think in terms of absolutes. Because we yeah. all think in terms, we all belong to a group or, 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 or at least we have an education or we, we have a way of thinking. And it's very difficult for a human being 
not to have uh, to, to go by absolutes, but mm. those might be implicit, right? Those might be unconscious. For yeah. example, people wake up in the morning at, at seven and will work till six. Most, I mean, most of them, at least those who do that and are pretty okay with it, they tend to think, well, this is a universal fact that work means waking up at seven or eight and, and working until six or is it it's a universal fact that we need to work uh, eight to ten hours a day and otherwise it's not work it's a... so the question is well the question i was asking you in fact is what makes you feel closer to paradise because i suppose that that's what you would like to yeah match uh, I, I if you will elaborate on the question just a little more I think I have an idea but I, I want it to be clear what do you mean by what makes me feel closer to paradise well if you want to let's say if you want to self-actualize right yeah you probably have an idea that is your own paradise, at least your, the, the, you know, the paradise version of yourself, the yeah. ideal version of yourself. You talked about pride and fulfillment, yeah. right? So yeah. paradise is a metaphor there. We're not talking about a place with angels and we're talking about yeah. Yeah. the place that you find overly optimal. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. It's uh, I I, I uh, if if I were to say for example so you're asking basically what what is my vision for the world sort of thing what 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 do I think a path uh, like a perfect world looks like or something like that at least for yourself let's start with yourself uh, yeah. can you name one or two uh values yeah that would qualify for for you feeling uh, one, one 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 of that is uh for me i i am a quite a creative somebody you know so personal autonomy for me is very important you know not being uh uh subject to the ebb and flow of um yeah, you know, the nice labor in the workplace and so on. So it, personal autonomy and a feeling of um, uh, having enough to get by without, um, you know, I don't know what percentage of people uh, living paycheck to paycheck and so on. So those are the basic things. And the next would be a sense of community and um, community where you are interconnected with other other people in meaningful ways you know in not just how is the weather you know but in, in meaningful ways and uh, you know the people look out for you and you look out for them and so on and uh, at society where people uh, for me personally uh, to live in an environment where you don't have to encounter human suffering you know because for me I, we talked about um what qualifies as generally good or bad and one thing i know for sure that is bad is people who are uh, experiencing extreme poverty hunger and so on uh, which they do not want to experience because you can choose to starve yourself you know so uh, that for me is clearly, I think everyone can agree. That's for me is universalizable, as you say, uh, that uh, human suffering that is obvious, you know, like somebody on the street begging, not having place to uh, sleep and eat and so on. So uh, really the basic things, you know, but for me, given my uh, creative uh, tendencies, personal autonomy, the space to think, to be, to create, you know. Right. I think that's a good um, conclusion for our session of today. Yeah. And I would like to, to reflect on that. Um, 
And especially how do you combine on the one hand this this creative uh, or self-created autonomy on the one hand and the other one hand uh, the sense of well-belonging not only well-being but well-belonging so yeah. let so that's another let's say uh, dichotomy but it doesn't mean necessarily that it's an opposition but i would like yeah. you to meditate on that and and we'll try to get a little bit more precise um next time yeah. we speak is that okay with you yeah that's fine uh, thank you very much for uh for your time and for the session you're welcome and so you're still up to posting this on youtube uh yeah that's fine yeah let's do it then yeah